I am just going to try to make this video really quick because I have to go to work soon, but this morning I had a weird bout of insomnia and Hulu finally got the seventh episode of The Orville, which is Majority Rule. I just finished it and I, I would say so far it's not my favorite episode, but there were a lot of things that I really did like about it. I will say there's definitely a comparison to be made to the episode Nosedive of the third season of Black Mirror. The basic premise of Majority Rule is that the Orville has to go and recover two researchers who are posted on a planet that uses ratings and Majority Rule to decide all things. There are no representative governments, it's a direct democracy in every single sense, absolutely everything is up for a vote, and so in this case it's very interesting because they have this feed that's basically the internet where if you know your transgression however minor is seen by enough people you can risk being facing criminal consequences just for offending people now I know everyone's gonna say this is a commentary on SJWs and I think to an extent it it is but I think it's also just a general commentary on the way our society enacts punitive damages online and how harmful it could be if that were ever institutionalized in any way. And I think it's really important to keep in mind when you realize that China, for example, actually has a rating system that you can use. I don't know if they've ended up in implementing it or not, but I read about it a while ago where it would influence everything from your credit and the places that you could rent to uh, your social standing among peers, which is very, very similar to how it is in Nosedive, where rather than an up or down vote, you get a rating. So the differences between these two premises, I think, are just the extreme to which they show it and the different things the episodes focus on. So Nosedive was much more focused on the general oppressive idea of ratings and how people create a false persona online to, to basically gain social capital with other people. Whereas in this one, there is a little bit of that where you see people kind of trading upvotes like favors and, you know, sucking up with upvotes and things like that, and even flirting with upvotes. But I think in this case, it's much more focused on the insidious nature of allowing public p opinion to have too much control over people's lives. And I think in this case, it's focusing much more on mass public opinion, whereas in a lot of ways, nosedive focused more on individual opinions of people and how easily they can be influenced by such minor transgressions if you don't know a person. So I do think that these two premises, while very, very similar, actually ended up being distinctive enough that I didn't think the episode was borrowing too much from Black Mirror. In this episode, they basically have to save Lieutenant Lamar from being the alien equivalent of lobotomized. Of course, this planet looks an awful lot like Earth, and they drive Earth-looking cars and wear Earth clothes, and it's very old Trek in that there's a mysterious M-class planet of human-looking people that do human-looking things. One annoying thing about this episode that kind of bugged me, though, is they send Alara down, and in the previous episode, Krill, they were able to use portable holographic generators to make themselves look like complete aliens, and yet they weren't able to do anything about Alara's forehead and nose to make her conform. So they had this really interesting moment of cultural appropriation where Alara's wearing a hat that she ignorantly had no idea is valuable to a particular culture on this planet. And this actually was kind of a, a great plot point in the end because, like, although I don't like how they arrived at it, it was kind of a fun little jab at the monoculture that you often see in old Trek where they basically pretend like every planet is completely uniform and doesn't have the kind of diversity that Earth does. So here it was really interesting to see a culture that looks like it was probably historically oppressed and wears this hat for specific reasons, and then you have this literal alien who has no idea what they're doing just using it to cover up their their face so that they can blend in and I don't know I thought it was just really creative because it hit on both sides of the argument where like yeah to an extent I see where the random guy with his hat is coming from but also she's just minding her own business and wearing a hat she didn't know it was an innocent mistake and there is this moment where she's basically being held hostage like take the hat off or these people will upload you to the main feed and you will be publicly crucified, you will risk being lobotomized for your tiny little transgression. I definitely enjoyed this episode. I, I would say it's not quite as good as some of the previous episodes, but I would like to note that it seems like they are working 
towards fixing that tone problem. At first, I thought that having Lieutenant Lamar grind on the statue was a tone problem, but then that inappropriate behavior actually became the entire plot of the episode, and I thought it was a really interesting way to kind of for once kind of acknowledge how crude some of the crew can be and have some social consequences for it in a way that moves the episode along but also doesn't really ignore that the show doesn't take itself very seriously a lot of the time. I think the biggest hindrance to this episode is the look. I'm pretty sure at this point uh, they were just trying to save money on this episode because it seemed pretty cheap. It seemed like they didn't want to make any aliens, they didn't want to worry about doing another planet effect. They couldn't even be bothered to try and find some way to simulate alien-looking cars. They even had yellow taxis on this complete alien planet. Like, come on. Uh, I think I think that was probably the biggest flaw. But honestly, the Orville is, is what it is. And so I can respect that they have limited resources. They don't have the budget that Star Trek Discovery has. And what they usually do with the resources does look very good and is very enjoyable so it's not too big a criticism i just wasn't too much of a fan of the aesthetics of this episode i you know the last little bit where they showed the girl at the end turning off the tv instead of voting on the public opinion thing of the day that was kind of a a nice little star trek moment to show that they had opened up this person's world and made a huge difference in how she saw her society and it, it was that little glimmer of hope that I love to see at the end of a Star Trek episode. And I think, again, this is why in a lot of ways, to quote someone in the comments on one of my previous videos, Star Trek, Star Trek's spiritual successor is the Orville. These are very Star Trek type questions. They're very Star Trek type commentaries. And while they are inherently political commentaries, I don't think they're so political that someone who is apolitical or someone who doesn't agree with the politics that Seth MacFarlane does won't enjoy it. I would say that this episode was really fun to watch. There were definitely some great scenes and I think that it had a very valuable and important conversation about majority rule and how we don't really give the people the ability to recover from gaffes and mistakes and things anymore. You know, now everything lives forever online. And I think it's actually kind of relevant to a lot of the discussions about the right to be forgotten and the idea that there is probably a point where you should be able to have certain things expunged from your Google record or whatever. But at the same time, I, I think it's, it's important to acknowledge that we also have more record of anything than we've ever had before, and in many ways that's good. Uh, I think this does a good job of not being too grim dark, but of making important commentary on some of the issues of our time right now and how they impact people. Obviously, I am still a fan of the Orville. I'm not nearly as stoked for the Star Trek Discovery episode this Sunday, so I'll be watching Grey's Anatomy till I feel better, because it's either the Orville or Grey's Anatomy at this point while I wait for the next episode of The Walking Dead. I'm not, I'm not excited about Discovery. <laughs> um, so that's everything I have for you on this. Let me know your opinion on the episode in the comments down below. If you like my videos, subscribe and hit that like button. If you don't, I am sure you will tell me. Vito Zane.